Now let's explore a few examples and uh, try to understand uh, what um, this behavior actually means. Let's take the binomial counting process. Now, if you remember the binomial counting process is um, a process that counts the number of successes in a sequence of IID Bernoulli trials, okay? So at every round, either the, the value of the process is th the same with the previous value, or it's incremented by just one, okay? Where, where at, at those epochs where you have a success, it's incremented by one, otherwise it stays the same. So for instance, such an evolution is possible, okay? At epoch number eight, okay? Well, this is the time, but since uh, this is a discrete time process, uh, it's, you, you can see this either uh, as a round or as an epoch, okay? So it is discrete time. The value is three at this point, okay? So the value it will take in the next epoch, nine, let's say, it can only be either three or four. Why? Because I'm already at three. So it will either stay the same or it will be incremented by one. You see, it only depends on the value I'm at right now, right? Since this, this is going to be uh, updated by the result of an independent Bernoulli trial, the probability that it will move to four is equal to the success probability, let's say P, and the probability that it will be constant at three is equal to the fail probability, okay? Alternatively, my process might have reached this point in this way, in this path, okay? The first event might have occurred instead of four, it could have occurred at one, okay? The second one, instead of the second success, instead of occurring at five, it could have occurred at six, okay? But the result is the same at epoch number eight, I'm at three, that fact doesn't change. So you see how I got at three at this point is irrelevant. It could have been like this. It could have been like this, could have been like this, okay? The fact remains that I'm at this point and the process does not care how it got there. It forgets it, okay? The path it took to that point has no effect on where it will go next, okay? With probability P at epoch number nine, it will go to four or with probability one minus P, the failed probability, it will stay at three. That's it, simple as that. However, many observations you make before this time, okay? As long as you know the value at this point, that's sufficient. How you got there is irrelevant. So. Uh, mathematically speaking, the probability that x of nine equals k, given that x of one is something, x of two is something, etc., etc., up to x of seven is something, x of eight is three, okay? This conditional probability is exactly equal to probability that x of nine equals k, given x of eight is three. So that information by itself is sufficient. So this is the Markov property. And hence the binomial counting process is a discrete time, discrete valued Markov process. Similarly, take the Poisson process. Now this time, this is not a discrete time process. It's a continuous time process, but it's still discrete valued because you are also counting the number of events in, in the interval from zero up to T, if you remember the definition of the Poisson process. Okay, so again, assume that I arrived at three at time instant eight using this path. Let's say if my first event occurred at this specific time instant, whatever it is, it's like 2.8 something, I don't know. For instance, the second event occurred here, the third event here. The fourth event hasn't occurred yet, okay? But the fact is at time equals eight, I'm at three, that I know, okay? So how the uh, process will behave after this point is 
dependent only on this information. At time equals eight, I have three events that occurred before, okay? The uh, exact instance where those events occurred is irrelevant because you see the interarrivals are exponential if you remember the Parson process. So the residual time of the next arrival after eight is also an exponential random variable. So after some exponential random time, another event will occur and the process will become four. Okay, but that, that behavior depends on this information only. If you know at time eight, the process equals three, you can uh, estimate or you can write the distribution of this process at any time after eight. Okay, how it got to three at eight is irrelevant. For instance, it, it could have taken this red path or this blue path or this one, or maybe the events occurred really early on, but it didn't occur for some time, or maybe they occurred just very recently. Okay, all of these lead to the same point, but consider the nature of the Poisson process, how we derived it. Every time instant we assumed as an independent Bernoulli trial. So at any time instant, an event can occur independent of any other time instant. So whether you have experienced a long time without any events, or maybe you have experienced very frequent events up to that point, that's irrelevant, okay? The only thing that is important is at time eight, the value is three, and the distribution after that can be based on just that information. How you got there, which path you followed is irrelevant. It is forgotten, okay? The process in that sense is memorialist. So we can express this as, for instance, you observe this process at 0 0.372, 2.489, etc. cetera, at, at a bunch of uh, time instance. Let's say your latest observation is at 7.813, okay? Based on this information, you would like to write the probability that at time t, where of course here t is greater than your latest observation, 7.813, given all these observations is equal to the probability that x of t will be equal to x, well, after this point, given only your latest observation, okay? That is sufficient to characterize this process. So Poisson process, as you see, is also a, a, a Markov process, but it's a continuous time, discrete valued Markov process.